Welcome to Python with Andrew. And uh, we're going to do a number of videos on object oriented programming. And we're going to introduce classes and objects. And I want to be careful here because it would be very easy for me to do a video and just show you all the syntax of how to define a class, how to use a, an object. But that's generally, that's easy to do. And you've probably learned enough Python if you understand the syntax by now. But classes and objects are a bit more complex than that. And more importantly, when you're learning them, you need to think about uh, bigger concepts. So I'm going to take a moment to touch on a little bit of theory, but more importantly, I'm going to break these videos up into a number of videos where we introduce one concept at a time, and then you can practice that, and then we'll build upon that, and then look at some real examples. Because that's the other thing about classes and objects is a lot of people talk about using them, and here's an example of, of the... Um, definition, but it's harder to think of really good use cases that are what I'd call intermediary. It's often used in more complex examples. But we're going to give it a try. So stay with me over the next few videos and certainly subscribe if you want to keep uh, seeing more of Python with Andrew. So when we talk about classes, objects, we ter use terms like encapsulation, polymorphism, inheritance, and they're quite big and complex terms. And I'm not going to go in all of those at the moment, um, but enough to say that when we are talking about object oriented program, it is bigger than just defining uh, classes and defining objects. And the one we're going to talk about over the next couple of videos is encapsulation. And that's the idea of, if you like, putting all of our variables that mean or are about something in one place and all of our functions in one place. And we do that just for two probably very simple reasons. One, it makes our code a lot cleaner if we, if you like, um, tidy it up and put it all in one place. And the second thing is we might put those definitions and those functions into a file and share that amongst other uh, programmers. So it's a lot easier to, if you like, compartmentalize uh, our program into smaller, smaller groups, hopefully using uh, concepts that are a bit more lifelike um, and make it easier for us to extend our program. So encapsulation is simply putting everything into one box, if you like, that means, um, or if you like, tidying everything up into the one box, or the variables, or the functions, etc. So as an example, if we were to create a program dealing with tennis players, um, and we, a tennis player has a name, it has an age, it has the number of wins, it has a ranking, has a number of bits of information about the tennis player, we might encapsulate that into a class called tennis player so that we've got them all in the one area. And then we might have a number of functions that might, if you like, record um, a match, how many, uh, that a win was made, that a loss was made, and that updates the ranking, et cetera. So we might have various functions to do with tennis players. We would again put that in the class of tennis players. So we're putting it all in together so that if anyone wants to use our module on tennis players, uh, it's nice and easy and understandable. We'll also see how if we've created a tennis player one, it would be easy for us to create a basketball player uh, and a hockey player and a soccer player uh, as different, if you like, objects. Um, and it, it makes it a lot easier to think about those sort of programs. And then we might use inheritance where we might say we've got a basketball player, a soccer player and a um, a tennis player, and they all have some things in common, and that's a, that they're all sports people. And maybe we have a higher level thing called sports people with all the common elements uh, that each of them have. That would be called inheritance. But more about that later. We'll talk more about that later. Let's dive in. And in the first video, I'd like to just basically define 
the most basic class that we can have. And let's just see what that looks like. And let's get some familiarity with that. So let's jump over to um, my empty file. Uh, nothing uh, fancy about that. The first thing we do <coughs> is we define a class. Now, a class is the definition of all the objects. So it's what we are going to do. It doesn't actually hold data. It just tells us what data it would hold uh, generally and what functions we could do on it. And to find that, it's simple. We use the class, and I'm going to use player. All right, so it looks a bit like a uh, function, I suppose. Uh, class is the keyword. The class name is a tennis player. Um, no arguments. No, it's not like a function or anything like that. And then underneath this, we can have a number of attributes. Um, well, first, what we're going to do, I suppose, is make sure we document it. A tennis player. Not, it wasn't very good documentation, but it does tell us that it's good to actually document what the class is going to be about. And then I'm going to have a name. Now, in this case, I'm actually going to give it uh, a name because this is the most basic. And I'm going to have games 35, uh, wins 33, ranking equals 2. So that's it. <laughs> I've defined a tennis player. Now, this particular definition is very, very specific. It's actually me. Um, not that I have uh, those games and wins and ranking, but it's got the name games. It's already filled out. So it's not a very useful uh, definition because it's only can be used for one person, which is me. But it demonstrates how simple a class is. And in fact, then we, if you like, create an object. And I'm going to call it tennis player one. And tennis player one is a tennis player. Um, and simple as that. Right. And then I can I clear this out. So far, oops, let me clear that out. Save that. I'll get no output because I haven't done any output. All I've done is I've defined a tennis player and I've now created an object. I've created one tennis player. And I can refer to um, any component of that object. And the way to do that, tennis player one, sorry, tennis player one, the way to do that is you use the uh, Object dot attribute, and that should come up with Andrew. Okay, and if I change that, or I put comma pp one dot wins, you would expect it to say Andrew thirty three. Okay, so what have we learned there? Quite simply, we can define a class. Again, this is not a very good one. We create an object. So this is here. I'm going to put here, create the object. All right, so now it exists. And then we can access um, access all the names in there. Now, let's have a look. If I print TP1, right, I'm printing the actual object. Let's see what that actually shows. Let me clear that out. It tells us it's a class of tennis player. Okay. So it is an object, okay, but we don't refer that. doesn't mean anything to us. The way we refer to things is tp.name, tp.wins, et cetera. So that's the most basic class that we can have. Not very useful because at the moment this only has one example. <laughs> what we really want is the ability to create many tennis players, right? And the way we do that, so let's just I'm going to delete all this, put it aside. The way we do that is that we create a 
initialization function. And that initialization function is called init. And it's, you'll see in Python, we have um, this special terminology, double underscore init, double underscore. And I'll explain what we have here, name, games, and wins. Okay. Now that, oops, I forgot to put a def in there. Right. That is a function, and that is an initialization function. And what that means is every time we create an object, it's going to run this function. And that's what we do. That's what we use to, if you like, create different objects with different names and different number of wins and games, etc. But let's continue on. Self.name equals name. Self dot games equals games. Uh, self dot wins equals wins. And I'm going to say self dot ranking. When you create one, you start off at ranking number 1000. Right? So let's have a look what I've done there. I've used this terminology self. Uh, this first one here, self and self dot name. We use that so that we can say this is the object we're creating. So the object.name is the name that we've passed in here. The object.games is the number of games, wins, etc. <coughs> so self, it doesn't have to be the word self, but generally in Python we use self. Right. So that's how we define initialization function. And what that means is now, when I create an object, tennis player one equals tennis player, I put in brackets the details. Andrew, I think it was 35, 33 wins. All right. And that creates a tennis player object. But now I'm giving it who the tennis player is. So I can create one object, two objects, three objects, etc. So I could create tennis player two equals tennis player Fred, who um, has played 35 games, but it's only won 21, right? And notice I didn't have to pass the ranking because we said that the ranking starts at 1,000. So now if I run these, right, um, and let me print out tp1.name, TP one dot uh, wins, and then I'll change that also to TP two. We should see if I do that. I've got Andrew thirty three, Fred twenty one. Okay, so there's a lot to grasp there, but this is just if you like the starting point. What I've done is I have created um, a class definition. I'm saying this is what a tennis player looks like. I've created an initialization function to start it off. All right? And that has a special form. It, it is a function. It uses a self parameter, self.name, self.games, etc. And then I'm create down here, I'm creating create an object. I've created an object, TP1, tennis player one, TP2, tennis player two. What I didn't show here, if I change this to the TP1.ranking, let's double see that our ranking is definitely 1,000, yeah, right? So the ranking starts at 1,000. Okay, so I defined the class and I created an object. So I'm going to stop there. What I'd like you to do is practice that. Take a look at this code. Modify some of the code that uh, you do. Make sure you're comfortable in how you use this initialization function. Because I'm going to say 99 times out of 100, a class will have an initialization function. doesn't have to, as you saw, my most basic one. But if you don't have that, then it's really not very useful as a, um, if you like, uh, a box for 
tennis player one and tennis player two and tennis player three, et cetera. And when we go forward, we're going to look at how we uh, make this a bit more active. But for now, practice that and um, let me know in the comments how you go with that.